Thanks for downloading this episode of the Resilient Advisor Show. This is part of our Investment Spotlight series. And in this interview, Chris Versace and I speak with Ricky Wright of Alkaline Water, symbol W-T-E-R. Chris, this interview really fit into the cleaner living theme that you have at Tomatica Research. What did you learn? Well, Jay, first off, you're exactly right. When we think about people trying to put, you know, better for you products uh, in your bodies, on your bodies, in the environment, or, or in this case, uh, beverages that are not sugary sweet, you know, like traditional soda pop, that they're not uh, flavored with artificial sweeteners or artificial colors, things like that. There's nothing better than water. And that's exactly what's at the heart of Alkaline Water's product portfolio. Um, hence, you know, it really does mesh well with our cleaner living investment theme. But what I really like about our conversation with Ricky is that he not only paints the picture of opportunity for Alkaline Water as they uh, morph from, you know, Alkaline 88 water into uh, flavored waters and other water related products. He also helps break down the classic growth story for a new product company, uh, which is not only geographic expansion as they move from west to east, but really also about those other products and potential other products that they might have. And of course, Jay, as you heard, he talks about their new relationship with perhaps one of the best spokespeople you could have on the planet, Shaq. Yeah. So I, I really had three takeaways. Uh, this seems to be a story about innovation, uh, distribution. They seem to be attacking that in a very methodical way. And then branding and the bringing you know, Shaquille O'Neal into the fold to help with distribution is going to be a home run. So I, totally I hope agree. you... Totally agree. Just I, I need to say one thing before we get out of here, Jay, with this is that you know we have been believers in alkaline water. And just for disclosure purposes, we own it in the stocks under 10 portfolio at the street. Our average cross basis is about a dollar. Jay Coulter and Chris Versace do not own any interest in the companies that they interview at the time of the recording or 30 days after the initial release of the show. Today, Chris and I are speaking with Ricky Wright, who is the president and CEO of the Alkaline Water Company, which trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol WTER. Chris, as always, is going to go deep into the inner workings of the company, but we like to start at a high level. Ricky, why should portfolio managers or financial advisors keep an eye on your company? Uh, because we're a true growth story, and there's not a lot of growth stories out there. I think the uh, average CAGR for the last five years has been over 45%. You know, obviously the COVID period, we performed better than most. We did a plus 20 and I see us returning to hyper growth uh, this year. Now we're, we're going to get into that, but let, let's step back a little bit, Jay. So um, when we talk with Ricky here, what, when you first came to the company, right, what was it that attracted you to it, right? So the, the, the prospect is a clean beverage company, alkaline water, right? We, we've all read in the press about how good alkaline water is good for you, but what was the, what was the, the pie in the sky opportunity that you saw, Ricky? Well, you know, first of all, I'm a co-founder. So when I came to the company, it was with, uh, partially with the ideas. Uh, you know, what really attracted me is that we had the opportunity to create a new category. Nobody was in the premium water space in the bulk water. And believe it or not, some eight years ago, we thought about the eco-friendliness of a bulk package versus the single serves. You know, the one thing about bulk packages versus single serves is, you know, it's, it's less plastic to begin with, but the chances of it getting thrown on a beach or thrown on a, a, on a sidewalk someplace is very negligible. Candidly, uh, that was really some of the initial thoughts that we had going into this thing eight years ago is that we're gonna bring a package out in the premium water space in a place where jug waters are the only water you can currently buy. And how has that morphed? Because when I walk down my grocery store, whether it's Harris Teeter or some others, I, I can see the big jugs. I can see the uh, 1.5 liters, but I can even see some of your newer packaging, which I, which I think is really cool, which is the aluminum can. So, you know, it, it's, it's morphed in the, in the fact that a couple of things. One, we are by far the number one premium water in the bulk space in the country. Uh, there's nobody even uh, second to, to us, uh, even close, probably within 20 million. We're actually the third largest uh, seller of bulk water in the country of any of the brands. 
and we're the only premium in the top 10. So that part morphed uh, naturally. Then all of a sudden we decided to expand into what we call our single serves. And our single serves morphed into where if you looked at the stats, I think just single serves alone, we'd still be in the top 25 of all the waters that are in the premium uh, enhanced water space in the country. And then you look at where we continued to morph was that we were literally the first national company out with our eco-friendly aluminum bottle. And so this was again, a, a step in, and I've got some stuff on the drawing, drawing board, I was actually looking at it, that continues to go down that road where we continue to be conscious of uh, the trends, conscious of what we think the consumer wants and, and conscious of what the consumer needs. When I, when I first um, read about you guys, Ricky, and I, I saw where you're going with water, you know, one of the things I really liked about it, was it really resonated with our cleaner living investment theme, right? It's not a sugary beverage. There's no artificial sweeteners or anything. But as you're embracing this cleaner packaging as well, the, the aluminum cans, and, you know, if you want to tilt the board, you can do that. Um, but to me, that, that says that you're right at the forefront of how consumers are really starting to shift their spending, whether it's for cleaner products for themselves or ones, again, that are uh, less bad for the environment. But, you know, you're, what also attracted me to your story is that you are very much in that growth phase of a lot of uh, companies, which is more geographic in focus, right? So you not only have an expanding product portfolio that we'll talk about, but you're really a geographic expansion out of the Southwest East as well, correct? Yeah, no, it's really, uh, that, that's a fun story, Chris, for us as well. Uh, you know, besides the fact that we have focused, in fact, clean beverage, I trademarked some three years ago, uh, just to show you that this isn't just, you know, we woke up one day last year and said, oh, the trend is, we, we, right. we foresaw the trend, but, you know, we do about, we have about four and a half percent of the enhanced market in the West. We have about, and these are all Nielsen data. This is all public. If you can, you know, get to the Nielsen data, we have about 3.8% now in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. Okay, about 1.8 in the Midwest and about 0 0.08 or 0.8 in the Northeast. So, you know, there's about 100 million people. I always try to, and I said this on the earnings call this year, is that, you know, there's 30 to $50 million just for us to hit the same market penetration in the places that we really haven't penetrated. And, and it's been a plan, Chris, the, the, the problem with water, and this comes from a, a, a seasoned businessman, the problem with water is it's this heavy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that yeah. you have to move your supply chain closer to where you're going to sell to. It's really interesting. So in one case, you've got a product that is heavy when it's filled. Mm -hmm. And in the other extreme, you've got a product called empty bottles. Yeah, yeah. That take up a bunch of space when they're being shipped to where you fill them. So there's always the dichotomy of, you know, how do we fix that? And we fixed that by doing a couple of things. We opened up an East Coast uh, blow molding factory with one of our co-partners, you know, one of our co-packers. We brought in additional handles to the East Coast. Okay, we've previously China and West Coast only. Uh, we've opened up new factories on the East Coast co-packers. And so we continue, we've, we've announced another one up in PA. And so we continue to move closer to closer where our target markets are. So if you were to look at yourselves, either compared to 12 months ago or 24 months ago, the number of purchase points that a consumer can pick up the product, whether it's grocery, convenience store, drugstore, what have you, how would you compare them? Would you, would you say that you were your 2X, 3X, what you were 12 to 24 months ago? You know, it's, it's uh, we're not quite that much, Chris. And the only reason I say that we're probably about 20,000 up. And most of that candidly was 19 mm -hmm. because unfortunately the last year of 2020, there was not a lot of resets. You know, the uh, everybody was having trouble with the exception of us getting product to market. You know, there were a lot of shortages. And so this grocery stores just, they just didn't, they just didn't do the resets. They just passed. It was kind of the last year. That's one of the reasons I think we're going back to hyper growth because most of our 20% growth last year was organic, which is just crazy when you think about the fact that we've been in some of these markets for five or six years, seven years. Right, right. But, but you guys have added over the last year, you know, certain drugstore chains and other things though. Yeah, I think I, we're 20,000 up in the last two years. Uh, if you're looking for a hard number. 
And and just for the for, for the listener, when you say twenty thousand, is that twenty thousand points? Yeah, that's twenty thousand new places you can go buy Alkaline eighty eight. Okay. Over the last two years. Okay. And okay. that includes places like Rite Aid, CVS. Okay, which uh, you know. Uh, Dollar General, some of the Dollar General stores, you know, so it's a Dollar Tree, I should say, not Dollar, Dollar Tree stores and those kind of things where we are in a place that we have not previously been. Okay. And when you look at it from a top 10, top 20 location perspective, again, customers that, you know, we as consumers would walk into and buy, what, how well represented are you and whether it's the top, you know, top 10, top 20, 25, 50, what, whatever metric you want to use. Yeah, so we, we actually track against the top 50, the rest of grocery top 50. Okay. And I think we're like in, in, in 37 of them. Uh, you know, we're in, we're in Walmart, we're in number one, we're in Amazon, we're in number two, we're in Kroger, number three, we're in Albertsons, number four, we're in HEB, Publix. I mean, those are, you know, if you look at the top 10, I just named six of them off the top of my head. Right, yes, right. it's probably there too. So, you know, if you just look at where we are, we're very well represented. The one place that we, uh, you know, we got the Shack deal, which we haven't talked about. Oh, we will. Oh, um, we will. Is is one of the things that that will bring us with the uh, their his ability and authentic brand group's ability is that we've never gotten to the clubs. You know, all the things that we've done well and right over the past uh, eight years, uh, clubs we've never been able to knock down that door, and we think with the Shack Pack we'll get there this year. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So, uh, just just a couple of questions before we we pivot towards that. So you're, you're in these uh, doors, as they say, um, I think you, you rattled off, like you said, seven of the top 10, but you still have room to grow inside each of them as you move west to east, correct? Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy good story on that. You know, what, uh, it's the old 80-20 rule, right? So, you know, what we, what we don't have is, so let's just go west coasting because that's a perfect example, right? I think we average four SQUs in a west coast store. Okay, now we go to the south, East, which we haven't had as much experience. We're probably three years behind there. Mm -hmm. And so let's just say we average three. And I'm, I'm making these up because I haven't looked at the most recent stats, but I know I'm pretty close. Mm -hmm. Now you go into the Northeast and we might have one, you know, maybe there's only the gallon, maybe two SKUs, Midwest, right. the same thing. So just organic growth within adding additional SKUs. And the one thing that I think I'm most proud of is that, you know, we've spent virtually zero dollars in traditional marketing. So everything is word of mouth. Somebody actually drinks the water, turns to their friend and says, hey, you got to go taste this. It's a great tasting water. And so our 20% organic growth last year was without additional SKUs scattered throughout. You know, we added maybe seven to 10,000 stores, 7,000, let's just call it. And it wasn't the function that a lot of my competitors, you know, they pounded away at their DSD networks and they added 25,000 stores and they still did not outperform us. That's the amazing part. And I think what, what's interesting about this is it's primarily in the core water offering, the Alkaline 88. But you guys have been working on expanding your product portfolio, you know, not, not just into CBD, which we'll talk about, but in, into different flavors and, and other things that I, I think there's a lot to go here. Yeah, I, I, I will go back to that. Uh, you know, the second fastest growing sector, you know, you get outside the alkaline, alkaline water sector, which should hit a billion dollars this year in the US alone, I think 3.8 uh, internationally, uh, you go to the flavored waters, very fast growing sector of, of the enhanced water space. We entered into that, unfortunately again, COVID hit, but we're having tremendous success this year. You know, I've, I've told the analysts, I think we're a couple quarters out still from being able to, you know, have to segment, but I think in the next couple of quarters, you'll start to see some segment, segment uh, reporting with respect both to the uh, flavored waters as well as the CBD water. And, and with CBD, you, that's kind of a, a bridge to your other CBD products. But I, I'm just curious, when you think about the future of your product portfolio, you know, there, there are obviously going to be more flavors that you can do. What, what are your thoughts about the larger functional beverage space, whether it's functional uh, waters or something else? Chris, you must have at least read my, or at least read my, <laughs> uh, my call. You know, we are, we are pivoting to... Uh, you know, not away from the alkaline water because the alkaline water is a functional water. So that's always going to be our base. And it's a great right. base to have. And, it, and it's growing, uh, you know, like I said, we are the only enhanced water state uh, company since 2019 that has grown double digits every four weeks in units and volume. 
I mean, that's crazy when you think about that, right? Just in terms of that we're the sole company in the country that has done that in the, in the top 10 brands. The, the thing with the uh, pivot is that obviously, if you looked at what I said during the, the most recent earnings call, is that we are pivoting in CBD first mm -hmm. to functional beverages. Okay. So, hey, you know, hey. right, in, right in front of me, you know, we will come out within the next, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a cheat sheet here because I was working well, go right on ahead. it. Go right ahead. I was ahead. working on it last night. <laughs> um, so within the, the next 60 days, we will come out with a relief. We will come out with a revive. We will come out with a refresh. We will come out with the resistance. We will come out with, uh, you know, re-energized, you know. So we are coming out to the functional. We, we will start that in the CBD area. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons. We have a we have a unique delivery system that is not in the public domain yet. Uh, hopefully, I'll make that announcement within the next week or two. Uh, you know, I don't like to get a, over my skis. I like to have things already produced. Mm -hmm, I'd mm -hmm. love to have an order in hand uh, before I make uh, specific announcements. But we will then take that experience, some of those formulations, and begin to move them uh, to the functional water and the mm -hmm. flavor side. And holding my favorite uh, watermelon. That's right. That's right. The, so, so just to clarify, though, your plan, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, is it to stay in functional waters? Because yes. there is a distinction with functional beverage. Yeah, I, I think it's functional. It's functional waters initially, for sure. Okay. Okay. I, I don't think we'll get into sparkling. And, and there's some reasons for this. Some of that, Chris, has to do with you know, trying to be true to the 8.8 .8 pH. Okay. 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 Once you put CO2 into a sparkling water, you destroy the, you destroy the alkalinity. Okay. So a lot of, and that's why some of the reasons we develop our unique delivery system is so that we maintain, you know, the water, the base water will always be alkaline 88 and a lot of what we're working on. Okay. Okay. And I, I suspect that this transition towards functional waters uh, that folds very nicely into the shack attack plan that you referenced earlier. Yeah. So the, so the good news for us there is that, you know, we will finally get eyeballs on us that I think we've not had before mm -hmm. on the consumer side with, with shack. Uh, you know, we've talked about this in the, in the quarter or the year in call that, you know, we expect to have by the third quarter of this year, third calendar quarter, not third fiscal quarter, uh, some of the uh, advertising, et cetera. Some of the media stuff already in the can. We'll begin to deploy those assets with Shack, and a lot of that will be focused on the Shack Shack Pack. Literally, uh, we will come out with a Shack Six Pack, uh, two liters. Uh, that that is hitting the markets this fall. Uh, we will then go into the the flavors, and to the extent that functionals are ready, we'll move into the functionals. And I'm working on you know, uh, a, 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 an additional size. It might be slightly larger, maybe shack size. Shack size, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. shack size aluminum. Uh, not not out uh, yet, uh, but uh, all the particulars are done and now it's just a function of uh, making sure that it's what we think the consumer wants and what shack wants. And, and from a business perspective, as you pivot more of your mix over time into, um, CBD and then other functional waters or larger sizes, I suspect that has a, a positive impact on your overall ASP, correct? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Uh, and you know, what, what'll, some of this is going to let us, you know, we launched with Hensley and Nevada Beverage and uh, another DSD network this year. Uh, kind of, we'd stayed away from it. It's a, it's a tough place to actually make money. You know, it's kind of like the old saying that, you know, the DSD wins, the retailer wins, you know, the manufacturer, you know, not so much the co-packer <laughs> wins. So there's kind of, you know, and that's kind of been the business model. I mean, you look at some of the balance sheets and some of the public beverage companies that are smaller like us. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, most of them race, you know, two to five times as much as we have to, to get where we are uh, relative to, to market strategy. So we've always stayed direct to warehouses. And now we're testing out the DSD in, in some specific markets where we're already strong. Okay. And we're gonna see how that rolls. And we believe that some of this functional beverage will open up some space in some convenience stores that maybe previously we had to compete with somebody that they were already happy with. Yeah, I mean, to me, it takes you from competing with um, some, you know, look, when, when you walk into the water aisle of the grocery store, just like, you know, milk today, and, you know, there's a variety of choices, right? But 
I think it expands where you're going and the perception of how people think about you. I, I, I don't want to say that you, you'll be the new vitamin water, right? I'm just throwing that out there as an example. But I, I think as you conquer the functional space, you're, it's going to help your overall awareness. Yeah, you know, Chris, uh, I, I have a, a, a slightly different spin on that than, than sure. vitamin water. Sure. Um, you know, I'm not trying to become an energy drink or a, a burning drink like Celsius did. Okay. Or but bang or some to, of those others, right? Yeah. But I am trying to develop some functionality that carves out a space for us as a first mover within that space. Okay. Okay. That says, okay, you know, these guys, again, are ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. They see what, what the consumers are asking for. You know, on my screen, I have the bright field data and, and Catalina and a bunch of other data sources. So I'm, I'm data driven. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the things I use every week uh, in terms of making my decision process. It's not uh, flipping a coin and saying, ah, oh, you know, that sounds like a, my wife said that that would be really good. <laughs> you know? I'm not that guy. Uh, right. I, actually, I actually drive it by the data. And you'll see that a lot of what we're doing is trying to stay ahead of the curve, not set the curve, because I don't want to necessarily be a pioneer. Okay, I'd rather be a settler. That's, um, you know, we, we talk about this all the time and that's Apple's strategy, right? If you, you notice Apple, they don't really invent anything first, right? They're always second to market, they refine it and they make it better, easier to use, you know, something like that. And I, I, I think that's smart on your part because you can kind of coast on someone else's higher R&D investment dollars. Uh, you hit it on the head. You know, yeah. the pioneers take a lot of arrows right? And, and a lot of bullets and, you know, are out there as the fodder, you know, they're the marching shoulders. And a lot of times the settlers are the guys that come behind and, and settle the, the, the land and grow the crops and harvest, right? And mm -hmm. I want to be the harvest guy, not the uh, taking the bullets guy. Correct. So, so when you're leading edge here, one of the things that you're incorporating is a line of CBD uh, infused product. And you said that over the next couple of months, that'll start coming out, I guess, in greater flavors and greater volume and greater doors. Uh, I imagine you have some visibility on that, given the, the timing with your uh, partners and customers, correct? Yeah, we do. You know, the, uh, you know, two years ago when the uh, farm bill went through, right, there was supposed to be some kind of FDA approval for CBD. We were, we literally were the first company in the country to already have a, a formulation for CBD water at the time. Uh, you know, we pivoted to some of the other uh, topicals and ingestibles, which are still, you know, in our mix. But candidly, Chris, we are, we are a beverage company and right. we're a water company. And when we go to have conversations with buyers, you know, the first thing they ask us on the CBD side is, uh, hey, can we, can we try your CBD water? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's good. We're going to be a water plus one. Well, I, I, I so I, I can say this. I have tasted, as, as you well know, Ricky, the uh, alkaline CBD infused product. And I have to commend you because you've done a wonderful job of, as I like to say, taking the farm out of the drink. Right. There's no grassy or farmy kind of taste, uh, you know, af aftertaste. So I, I, I commend you and the team on doing that. Um, but I, I just wanted to just hang on that CBD product side for just one quick second. Um, I know that you guys have been, you know, uh, dabbling, shall we say, in, you know, creams and um, tincture drops and other things. Do, do you, how big can that be as a part of the overall business? Is I mean, you know, not, not in the next six months, but, you know, let's say two, three years down the line, is it still going to be, you know, sub 10% as you're thinking? Um, you know, Chris, great question. Uh, it, it's going to be macro trend based. Okay, candidly, uh, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and, you know, being 43 years deep into business, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I've learned over that period of time, and some of it's by the, the, the school of hard knocks is that if the marketplace is big enough, if you look at the opportunities we're going after, mm -hmm. okay, CBD, international, hospitality, e commerce, right, big box club, you know, they're all billion dollar opportunities, right? And, and so you don't always need to be a 10 percenter and a billion dollar opportunity to really have a great business. And if you look at CBD, I think the lead guy right now, which is uh, Charlotte's Web, mm -hmm. I think they still own less than 5% of that oh, projected oh. to 22 billion. So me for CBD, I'm looking at it and saying, you know what, 
let's go hit it with the CBD water and some of these other ingestibles and topicals that the, mm -hmm, the market mm -hmm. seems to really be glommed onto. Mm -hmm. And then let's just see what happens with uh, legislation and FDA guidance, because right. I can tell you that I'm already on uh, shelves, you know, sets in major companies. Once they green light from their attorneys, you know, you're going to start seeing, you know, what I do with the bank thing, you know, you're going to start seeing the CBD water on their shelves because huh. they've already done the, all the tests. So the question is, it's how quick the legislation happens right. and how quick the trend, trend stays with the consumer. I still think I'm a big consumer curve guy, you know, cause I studied it, you know, way back when. Right. And right. I still think we're on the early stages of the CBD consumer curve. Oh, I think you're, I, I think you're absolutely right. I, I apologize. What, what I meant was. In so I don't know if it's going to be 10% or 50% three years from now, Chris, I, I just don't for know. Your, for, but, but, for, but for your business. That's what I meant. Okay. I don't know if it's going okay. to be 10% or 50 because, you know, some of the other things we're working on, I think have as, as much potential. Okay. In terms of, you know, the flavor infused, we have a great product, not a good product, a great product. Uh, some of the functionalities we're bringing out with the CBD beverages are not good, but great going back to the taste profiles. You know, uh, I read an article by Pepsi's president the other day. And, and the number one thing he said is that everything they work on has to taste great. And that's kind of been my philosophy since day one. Yeah, that was, doesn't taste great. Why do you do it? Well, see, to me, that earnings call that you're referring to from PepsiCo, their, their June quarter earnings, that had alkaline water stamp of approval all over it because of what they said about pivoting away from sugary beverages, right? And how they're trying to, again, hone in on, to your point, taste. And I, I it's, you know, to me, that, that's just a big proof of confirmation. You know, I, I was talking with Jay about this earlier. When you see companies like PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, and the like pivoting towards you know, non-sugary beverages, better for you beverages, and the like, you guys are already there, right? So, so for me, the, what, I, what I have to wonder is at what point do you po start popping up on these radar screens? Because the water business and the beverage business in general tends to be fragmented and then consolidate and then fragment all over again as you know different hot points come up whether it's yeah, you know yeah, teas Chris, or whatever i think that we're probably on some people's radar screen you know we are the largest independent water company left on the enhanced space okay and there's not a close second uh you know the, the difference between us in fact we're gaining on a name chris that uh, if you'd asked me three years ago could we ever pass this particular uh, enhanced water, I'd have thought no chance in heck because it's one of the big boys. Is. And, uh, you know, I see us within 18 months of actually surpassing them in terms of, of gross dollar volume at the retail level, which is just wow. amazing to me. Absolutely. Um, uh, and, you know, we'll move up to number nine and maybe even have a shot at number eight. And, and I see that, you know, a lot of it has to do with why I'm doing some of the proof of concepts I'm doing. You know, it's, it's not that I need to go spend $260 million dollars to be all present in every DSD in the country, mm -hmm. right? What I need to do is spend enough money and support that team well enough that I can prove Hensley out of the out of Arizona, you know, Nevada beverage out of N Nevada, you know, maybe pick one or two up in the East Coast, right? Improve the concept there, because whoever's going to buy us if that ever occurs, mm -hmm. right? The, I, you know, one of the bigger problems that some of these guys do is they don't leave enough green space. You know, so it's it's one thing to hit a hundred million, mm -hmm. right? And have done it in every possible outlet you could be in. Have your a ACV of, you know, 90% or 88%, right? What do you have left the big boys? 12%, right, for, yeah, for yeah. doors to go to? I'm gonna prove concepts in a lot of different places and have already. And then once those concepts are proved, you know, it makes, just make, in my opinion, and I could be mm -hmm, wrong, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just makes us more valuable. It gets me a higher multiple than the than the one trick ponies. I totally and, agree. And totally, I have you, totally I view, agree. I view core and Essentia as one trick ponies. You know, not that they didn't do a great job because they did, but they really are one trick ponies. Totally, I totally agree. And it's it's the branch into these other areas in terms of flavors and functional that I think are really gonna put you on the map. Not 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 that you aren't there, but it's going to solidify your position. Yeah. And so the, the funny part on that, Chris, is you know, when we chose Shaq, we chose him for very specific. I mean, they chose us as much as we chose them because, you know, authentic brand groups uh, actually owns the the brand shack. There's the man shack and the brand shack. Right, and, right. And and uh 
you know, we had to run that gauntlet and they're, they're owned by BlackRock. So it wasn't a little gauntlet to run. You know, they, they had to see some significant upside to even think about doing the deal with us. Um, and, you know, one of the things with the shack opportunity for us is the fact that, you know, we have the opportunity to become a household name literally right, become right. a household name. And then that just becomes, the brand becomes now a household name, you know? And, and I have pivoted between Alkaline 88 and 88 as, as the branding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that, you know, we can then, uh, you know, like a V8, you know, or I always use Heinz 57. How right. often do you see 57 on Heinz anymore? You don't, it just is Heinz. Correct. Right. And so Correct. again, with that in the back of my brain, you know, we've trademarked all those things and, and are prepared to, make us a household name over the next 18 months. And the so, beauty with the Shack deal is it's three years. So it's not a, you know, it's not a ready fire. I got to get to the races and I got to be there by this time next year. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's more the tortoise, slow and steady wins this race. Got it. So let, let me just pivot because we only have a little bit of time left and there, there's two or three things that I really want to catch on. One is um, when we look at companies, one of the things we, we try to think about is capacity utilization, right? You know, are, are you running so hot that you can't expand anymore? You need to bring more capacity on. How do you think about your capacity, particularly as you try to bring all these other beverages onto market? Is, is, is it something you need to bring the capacity up first and then fill? Or is there a way that you can kind of bring it on almost real time? So it's, it's a, it's a co-packer model. So mm -hmm. low people, low capital, annuity, cash flow margin, nothing happens without a sale. You know, Ricky writes personal business philosophies, right? So it's a low capital portion of that. And, you know, I've got a manufacturing background as well. And so I always, I have always said, okay, guys, this is why we were, we were so hot during COVID because we were literally the only guys in the country to put water on people's shelves. Right. Because I had prepared for the capacity. And so we're, okay. we are always ahead of the capacity. Okay. E even the delivery system I worked on, the reason I worked on that is because I, I should be able to do this in my current plants and I won't have to worry about finding a hot fill someplace or a, or a, a, a canned product someplace. I can do it within the, the 10 or it'll probably be 12 relationships that we've already developed over the last 18 years by this time next year, which you know we've always talked about here to make sure we could do 100 million wholesale, okay, in the blink of an eye. Okay. And that has always been kind of the, the, where I've set out with my, my uh, operational people. So when, when you're thinking capacity, I, I know a lot of people were like, you know, we're thinking three months, six months ahead. It sounds more like you're thinking 18 months plus ahead. You're absolutely right. You know, I'm, I'm always, and if, you, if you're around me long enough, Chris, uh, most of my thinking is six to 18 months out. Excellent. I've got okay. very good people to operate this business. Very good people in seats. We're, we're adding bench strength every day. Um, and you know, it's one of those things that, you know, we added a hospitality guy, we added an e-commerce guy, there'll be a couple of more announcements coming up soon. Um, and you know, it's all about getting the right people, you know, not to, not to necessarily steal the GE uh, model, but it's putting the right people <laughs> on the bus. Right, 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 right. Now, um, capacity is one thing here in the U S but you're also talking about international expansion. And I think that's one of the things that you're hoping that if, if I read the literature correctly, that Shaq can help with, that's a different business to some extent, isn't it? Where it, you know, there, there's different challenges, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, there, there is Chris, but you know, part of the, part of the secret is, is that I've done business internationally for 20 plus years. Okay. So there's, there's not this, you know, I'm afraid of, of the international right. markets. And part of it is that, you know, I, I paid a close attention when we first started this, the Baltic, uh, the Baltic rates, you know, putting something on a ship and, and sending it mm -hmm. versus putting something on a truck and going across the country. And, you know, they're, they're not that far apart. And so right now we've, we've gotten FDA approval on three strategic locations, East coast, West coast, and, and Gulf of Mexico co-packers for export. So okay. as we develop, you know, Canada is a little different story because, uh, you know, we can go into Canada and there's a CBD play there with the people we're talking to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, they can do both for us. And so Canada is a slightly different story, but we'll probably, we'll probably approach that market slightly different. So uh, just because of packaging size, et cetera. So is it fair to say at least, you know, near term, and by that, I mean, let's call it 12 to 18 months, it, your international expansion is more covering North America, not necessarily going to Europe. I, I think we'll go to Asia first. 
I don't think we'll get to Europe. If we're going to go on an ocean, I think it's going to Asia. Okay. Is there any particular reason for that? Uh, there's something about the number 88. Oh. Okay. okay. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not steeped in that, so. Oh, yeah. It's the lucky number in China. Okay. 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 It is by far, you know, it is by far, it means uh, it's Baba, Papa. It's a, it's a lucky number. Okay. 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 So it's, it's, uh, it is, uh, we, we were actually in China before the uh, embargo. And then basically our, our product was destroyed because they weren't going to take any more U.S. US product in. So we can re-up that at some point in the near future. Uh, not sure it's going to happen in the next 12 months, as you said, because it is a process. Right. They have their own separate FDA. So despite the fact that we're approved here, it doesn't mean that the CDA in China has approved us or some of the other Asian markets. Okay. Um, I think when we first spoke a uh, long time ago, um, you had mentioned to me that, and I'm, I want to make sure I get this correctly, because if, if I remember correctly, it, it's a powerful point, that the water business is just shy of self-funding. Very true statement. So, so, you know, when I look at, you know, Flow just came public, right? And I look at all, you know, what they've done and what they've spent and how they've, how they've got to where they are today. And I look at us and, and absent the public market dollars that we do spend, because there is a, is a substantial public market support mm -hmm. uh, that we, we spend every year. Uh, you know, the, we've, had, we've had months, and I've said this publicly, we've had months where we've been better than break even, okay, right. at the operational level. I mean, the operational level, uh, we could go cash flow positive tomorrow operational, Chris, uh, but it would slow down our growth. And that's a very simple model for me. I just quit selling to people that aren't taking full truckloads. So let's just use the right aid as a perfect example, right? Or right. CVS. Three years ago, CVS, or two years ago when we started with them, they were taking less than truckloads. I was losing my shirt every time, right? But you needed yes. to be there. You needed to be. Huh? But you needed to be there. Right. So I lose money, yeah. right? But every right, truckload, right. and it's not a little bit of money because sometimes when you send a pallet or two, it's 120% of your, your freight costs is 120% of what you're getting paid, right? But slowly but surely, they've moved to full truckloads. Okay. Right. So now I make money on every time I ship to them. Right. And that's the, been the business model for us is that we support where we think we need to be. But ultimately, when we mature a little bit more and maybe it doesn't happen in, in my cycle. Right. <laughs> um, but when we mature a little bit more, you know, full truckloads, cutting out the broker. I mean, there's a ton of ways that you could make cash immediately vertically integrate. You know, I could pick up 20 points probably uh, and, and just if I decide to go spend a ton of money on, on a plant someplace or, you know, partial plant. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's a, tons of ways that we can increase uh, our profitability in a hurry. But right now we need to stay a growth story. And we've never been stronger manufacturing. We've never been stronger sales. Okay. We are having record PO sales month after month here. Okay, it is, it's an astounding thing to me because, uh, you know, the, the market's opened up, but we continue to grow uh, as fast or faster than anybody, which, you know, I just looked at the four week numbers and I'm like astounded at where we are relative to the market. And so, you know, those are the real stories for us. Is it, is it to get back to that 35 to 50% growth year over year? So the one thing I will say is what, you know, a lot of investors, they, they always focus on the pie in the sky right? The great opportunity to be had. But I, I, I do think that it's important for people to recognize potential risks that are out there. So I, I would close with this, Ricky. you got a great story, but what's the one thing, if you had to isolate it, that keeps you awake at night? You know, you asked me that six months ago, Chris, I would have said the supply chain, because supply chain is always a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Manufacturing, you know, you have to get the manufacturers, you have to get, you know, right, right now, I, I think the the one thing that, that may keep me up at night, but not like, like nightmare keeping me up mm -hmm. is to successfully implement a DSD strategy uh, and the hospitality strategy. Those markets are so huge for us. I think the CBD is coming. I think the international happen as a matter of course. I think we're going to get into clubs. Okay. So, you know, my, my angst at night is, okay, how do we, how do I prove myself out in a DSD? You know, we're finally getting uh, that up and going this month, candidly. Where right. Hensley's taking on a, on a big role, and that's uh, John McCain's uh, wife's company. So it's very well. It's an ABG. It's an Anheuser Busch house. So it's very well recognized throughout the country as you know a major player in the DSB network. And then the hospitality, 
you know, we stubbed our toes last year because we got into it right at COVID. Mm -hmm. And if I can go prove that out and pick up some of these big hospitality chains, uh, you know, all of a sudden that's again, another game changer for us. And that's somewhat why I'm working on some of our packaging, because I think this is very attractive to a lot of hospitality industry, mm -hmm. you know, get away from plastic bottles, get away from glass bottles, this comes nice cold to your table, not a bad package. What, what about, you know, as we're going through the current earnings season, we are hearing companies talk about input costs, fuel costs, that sort of thing. Not, not, not that it's a huge worry for you, but any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that goes back to some of what I said earlier in terms of, you know, you could, you, you know, we need to mitigate where we can, right? Yeah. We're trying to, we're trying to do some special deals with some of our, our manufacturing, maybe some, do some vertical integration, some co co-projects, you know, joint ventures, some mm -hmm. things that, 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 mm -hmm. that increase our efficiencies. Uh, you know, we're opening up some new plants, kind of close that gap. I mean, if I, I give myself nightmares, that is a nightmare, like where the fuel costs are right now. Right. Right. Those kind of things. Uh, you know, resin is increasing. We did go to our first price increase. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big mm -hmm. elasticity demand guy. So I've done the studies. I don't believe it's going to hurt us at all in our growth, growth trajectory, but you're kind of, you know, kind of always in the back of your gut say, oh, well, what if it does, you know, how do you backspin and keep your margins? So, you know, uh, margin contraction, I guess if there's something that does, does look at night, margin contraction, we're, we're trying to stay ahead of that curve. I think we're doing a really good job as a company, especially a small company to kind of pre-see or foresee what, what was coming down mm -hmm, the road. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and we've taken some significant steps in that, in that arena, but you know, it, it could happen. You know, the, the freight costs could come out of, out of control. We we've got special relationships with our carriers though. You know, one of my philosophies has always been uh, become the most important, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, I stole it from a couple other guys. It's not a Ricky Wright original, <laughs> but if you are the uh, most important guy to that particular manufacturer, and without your your business, they they close. Uh, you know, you can you can drive a hard, harder deal, and you can drive a fairer deal for both of you. You can right. both take a little bit of haircut here and there, and both survive. Right. Yeah. I I, 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 I think as long as you guys are you know uh, in it to win it together. You know, everybody wins and in tough times, everybody, you know, gives up a little bit. I, I, I think that's a pretty fair way to go about it, personally speaking. Yeah, no, um, it's, and, and it proved out over COVID. You know, I, I actually got on a, one of the things that I probably drive, used to drive my board crazy, not so much anymore, is I might get on a plane, go shake a guy's hand and have a meal with a guy kind of guy. Smart um, business. Might smart, only be once or business. twice, but, you know, it allowed me to pick up the phone and call everybody I needed to call. So, and well, Jay... So those allow me to sometimes when times do get tough mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make a phone call and figure out what is a win-win for both of us. Well, I'll, I, I didn't want to say this while you were uh, talking earlier. I, I think that if people want some real proof in the pudding, you compare your sales to what we're seeing uh, in the monthly retail sales numbers that come out by the Census Bureau. When you look at grocery that's you know flat year over year and you guys are crushing it. I think that's a much needed context that should, you know, kind of clue people into the story and the possibility. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a pinch yourself moment, right? You know, <laughs> I, I, was, I was a restaurateur, my first entrepreneurial venture and, and God rest the soul, my partner died and, but he would always put into me, Ricky, you know, you can give a small plate, you can give a uh, crappy service, you can overcharge, but if you deliver a great meal, they're coming back. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, conversely, I can give you the largest plate, cheapest price and best service, but it'd be a crappy meal. And the thing that he taught me was, you know, you're not losing, if there's six people sitting at lunch and you serve one bad meal to six people, you didn't lose that person. You probably lost all six because they probably just said, we're going to lunch today. Well, you probably lost more than that because who else are they going to talk to about it? And ah, I wouldn't go there. That meal was horrible. Right. And so, you know, that always stuck in my back of my, that's why it took us two years to develop the flavors. I mean, it's, it's always about what goes into the consumer mouth, quoting the president of Pepsi. It's got to taste great. <laughs> exactly. Jay, I'm going to give you the last word. Uh, hey, listen, Ricky, I'm sure you can see why I just sit here and watch Chris go through the questions. He does a great job of letting people come on, tell their story, digging into the weeds of the why and the how, the risks, the opportunities. I learned a lot today. Uh, I learned 88 is a, important number in Chinese culture. Uh, so if podcast listeners, if you'd like to learn more about the Alkaline Water Company, visit the alkalinewaterco.com. That is the alkalinewaterco.com. 
Ricky, we really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate being here. And as one last comment, I always say this, I think I'm the most undervalued stock on the market. We only traded about one and a half times uh, revenue and beverage companies get sold for a lot more than that traditionally on a, on a growth company. True. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Ricky. All right. Thanks, guys. Have great days. Important information. The information provided is for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute investment advice and it should not be relied on as such. It should not be considered a solicitation to buy or an offer to sell a security and you should consult your attorney or tax advisor. All information has been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but its accuracy is not guaranteed. There is no representation or warranty as to the current accuracy, reliability, or completeness of, nor liability for, decisions based on such information, and it should not be relied on as such. Pinger Systems, LLC, doing business as Resilient Advisor, was compensated for the production of this content.